shopping, wrapping, and party planning the holidays can be incredibly stressful. But luckily, we have a guest expert to help us. His name <laughs> is Chef Bill Collins, and he's going to answer your questions online, on air, on the phone. So get Call there now. Call in now, 413-377-2001. I'll answer your questions. Chef Bill, always nice to have you here. It's great to be here, Ashley. Thank you, Holiday Steph. Holiday ham. A lot of people are making them for the holidays. We're going to start with that today. Y yes, we are. And the thing about the holiday ham, especially a spiral cut ham, there's so many out there, and they're all very good. It's a spiral cut ham. One thing you can do to make yours even better is they all come with a little glaze. Make yourself a little glaze instead of the one that's in the package. Sometimes there are maybe funny ingredients, but you can get the flavor you want and it put your own personal touch on the holiday ham. And it's pretty easy to do. It's about four ingredients, and for any easier, it'd be opening up the package. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you show us how to do is pretty easy you to, do uh, make to it. say, but it's always delicious too. Thank you. Oh, oh. So the ham, you you Move warmed it in the oven. <laughs> yes, I did. It, it, there are just, just a few they steps. Come cooked, right? Yes, the ham is always cooked, and so. What they do for a spiral cut ham, the general instructions are all pretty much the same. Heat it up, cover it up with foil, uh, maybe a little water in the pan, that's what I did, maybe uh, help uh, warm it a little bit faster. And then you put the glaze on, uh, you turn the temperature up in the oven, and finish it for about anywhere from 20, maybe 30 minutes. And the glaze will caramelize, you get a nice little crackly topping on top, and so you get a nice little crunchiness on top of the ham. That's what I like. So, yep, so, and that's really, and so what it is, is it's really just pretty much sugar and more sugar with a little more sugar. Because in this case, we took some um, uh, maple syrup, and while the recipe calls for grade B maple syrup, do not make yourself crazy if you can't find it, get maple syrup. But don't get the Aunt Jemima, get the real maple syrup. The flavor will really come through. Okay. Huh. And the other sugar we put in, some orange marmalade. So you have a nice orange flavor with this, as well as the, uh, the maple syrup. Now the reason you heat it up, rather than just uh, doing it cold, is this gives a chance for the, uh, uh, the marmalade to break down a little bit, instead of just being this clump that you try and put these clumpy things on. Oh, that's the worst, when you're trying to smear it like jam. Because it's supposed to be Right, a glaze, so it yeah, should be exactly. in this kind of form. Yeah, right. Just a little bit of cinnamon, because nothing says the holidays like cinnamon. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it, and so you're ready to go. So now you've got two ways that you can do it. You can spoon it on, which is very easy to do, or you can brush it on. And I don't know if you've seen any of these silicone brushes uh, that are everywhere. These are just fantastic because uh, we everybody grew up with a little Play-Doh looks like a paintbrush, and you get pretty much one use out of those because you can never really get them clean, and they're kind of gross. Yeah. This is you can throw this in dishwasher so. Oh, you it, can. Oh, these are perfect. You can. Yep. Oh, great. So this is just like the perfect thing. Great stocking stuffer. It's the right size. I know. Fits right in the stocking easily, right? Ex exactly. You know, I can't stand it anymore. You two, <laughs> why don't you glaze the ham? I'm going to grab plates because eventually I'm going to eat a lot. I think you're looking hungry. Great, I'm just grab some <laughs> Absolutely. I can't focus right now because I'm just thinking about eating ham. So, so what you want to do is see you've got a nice uh, consistency to it. It's a nice and thick. And again, you can just pour it over if you want, or it really is just take a few moments and brush it on. And this way, I mean, you, I'll be pouring it on, but this way you make sure you get some right all along the cuts. Now, Bill, you said there's maple syrup in this glaze. Yep. There's the orange marmalade. Yep. And what are the, what is the, is that onions in there as well? I uh, know that what you see floating around in there is just little bits of the, from the marmalade. Oh, so, okay. It looks like, a, it looks like onions, it caramelized does. onions. It does. And actually, you can put caramelized onions in. That's the great thing about doing a glaze like this. Whatever flavor you want, you can put in cloves. If you really like a lot of the holiday uh, flavors in there, uh, you can really uh, do it up as much mm. that way. And so now, by making sure that we get it right across Ooh. the top, we're going to increase the flavor even more. And I'm going to pour some down. It's going to go down to the sides a little bit. Oh, yeah. And so this way, like I said, I just want to make sure we had a nice covering on top. Oh my goodness! And the I can't wait to eat this. And the advantage is that you don't have to, uh, you know, pour it all on because this is going to make a great dipping sauce at the table. Oh, of course, That's you need that idea. too. Exactly. Now let's talk leftovers because you know this is a pretty <laughs> big ham. Yes, it is. I mean, it'll probably get, well, it'll definitely get eaten today. Yep. But if we did have some leftover, <laughs> what are some other things you could do with the with the ham? There's so many things. Uh, I, I personally, especially with the bone in the middle, I like making pea soup. And or use it as a base for almost any kind of soup. You get that nice ham bone in there. And then you can uh, chop up bits of the ham and so you've got the meat in there as well in the soup. Or I'll tell you, these make great sandwiches. So, mm -hmm. or you can uh, take a few slices, heat it up in the morning. So uh, uh, ham and eggs uh, when you get up uh, in the morning. So there's just so many things that this can really take you through every meal of the day. It's kind of like getting one of those rotisserie chickens and you can make a lot of different meals with it. Exactly. Same it. thing with the ham. Make That's a ham and then 
Breakfast, did, lunch, and dinner? Exactly. A lot of leftovers, and that's the great thing about this. Great. Well, Chef Bill, we have a, a lot coming up with you. We're going to answer some questions. We're going to talk about ham again, and we'll also talk about fish, too. Super. So Looking everybody can call in right now, by the way. What is it, 377-2001? That's it. So you can get your questions answered. There are lines open. The line is open. So. Good. <laughs> and, uh, and Bill is going to be finishing up this holiday ham recipe throughout the show, so you definitely have to stay tuned. Welcome back to Mass Appeal. It is Taste Appeal. We're in the kitchen with Chef Bill answering your cooking questions live. You can call in right now, 413-377-2001. And we have someone on the line. Yeah. Don. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi, Don. Hello. How are you? Fine and you. Great. Good. Thanks Happy for holidays. Asking. And same to you. So Chef Bill is here ready to answer your question. Okay. I'm doing a beef tenderloin this Ooh. year. Can I come and over? Uh, nice. And I need to know how long to cook it for a medium. Uh, the, I'm going to give you a, a really strange answer, and the answer is until it's done. And that might sound like a joke, and it is, but uh, figure somewhere around 12 to 15 minutes per pound. But if you're looking for medium with an instant read thermometer, because you want to take its temperature, yeah. uh, take, the temp take it out at around 135 degrees. Okay. Maybe 130 in that range. What's going to happen is you're going to want to let it sit on your counter for a little bit. And then what's going to happen is uh, the temperature is going to continue to rise. Right. And then from there, um, uh, it also, it won't be as runny with the juices. It'll settle in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll be enough time. So if you figure, did you say about four pounds? No, yeah, for about five. About five, because that's about the upper size of a beef tenderloin. Right. So on the one hand, you might say, well, gee, that's getting close to an hour. I would check the temperature at about 35 minutes or so, because sometimes, especially at the thinner end, if it's not tied off, mm -hmm. that'll be a little more well done, which you might want some people a little more well done. So check it at its thickest point. Okay. And when you put in your instant read thermometer, only put it in halfway into the meat. Right. Because what's going to happen there is if you put it all the way through, it's warmer on the other end. And the other so, end. Yeah. What temperature should I put it at? Uh, 375. You can go 350, but 375 is always a nice, safe temperature. Very good. Well, Great. thank you very much. Thank Happy you. Holidays. Thanks for calling Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And if you have any leftovers, feel free to swing them on by here. I'm here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. Happy holidays. Thank you so much, Chef Bill, for answering that question. So earlier, when we were with you earlier, we yes. were talking about our ham. We made the glaze. Yep. And we put it on the ham. Yeah, put it right in the ham. And so right now, it's finishing its last 15 minutes or so in the oven, and it's getting a nice glaze on top. And so while it's doing that, we've got the other glaze here, which is a nice dipping sauce. Yeah. And I've also actually started a few little onions here, which are going to be starting for the fish dish. But really, uh, that's the great thing about this dish, is you don't have to stand over it and do all these methodical things. Put it in the oven, walk away, and attend to your family, tend to your kids, or whatever other side dishes. You don't have to be a slave to that dish. And that's another great thing. Thing about doing whether it be a roast like Dawn is doing mm -hmm. uh, or the ham today is that you know it, it's very it takes care of itself right and that's great around the holidays you got a lot going on yep. yeah you know you have company so you want somebody you don't have to stand over exactly and keep an eye on. well we're, we're, I'm gonna hang out with you in the kitchen perfect so we'll yes. be back with you throughout the show make sure you give us a call we can answer your cooking questions live on the air well not me but <laughs> no Bill can. You know, so we can do almost you, nothing Bill. to help everybody <laughs> yes. out but in the meantime I'm gonna we are back with Chef Bill in the kitchen. We're also back with a caller. We have her on line one right now. Hello. Hi, happy holidays. And to you, you how's too. it going? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. About to eat fish, can't complain. What's your question? I'm cooking a holiday stuffed boneless pork roast. It's stuffed with mozzarella, peppers, and green olives and bacon. Ooh, that it's sounds about, good. Yeah, it sounds good. It's, it's about four pounds, and I'm wondering what temperature and how long. Uh, I would go 350 on that. Uh, the time, it could be plus or minus an hour. Again, uh, I would take its temperature. If you have an instant read thermometer, uh, you want it to come out at about uh, 150 to 160 degrees. It doesn't have to be any more than that uh, through the center part of the meat. Since it's stuffed, you're actually gonna, just going to go uh, uh, not all the way through uh, to the middle because you're going to have your uh, stuffed ingredients in the middle there, which will actually be warm. I mean, those are going to be hot too. So you do want uh, about 150 to 160 degrees. I would say hour, hour, and uh, I'm thinking out loud now, about an hour and a quarter. Order, but check it at an hour and see what your temperature is, and that's going to tell you uh, how it's going to come up. You want it to be moist. And I think a lot of the things that people forget, too, is that pork, you can eat a little on the rare side these days. Yes, actually, pork, it used to be for uh, many years that pork had to be uh, well done and gray. Yeah. Now they're saying 150, 155 degrees, uh, still a slight pink to it, and still very juicy. So you can have a little pink in your pork, you'd be all set. Absolutely. How's that? Does that answer your question? 
Yes, it does. Um, happy holidays and God bless you all at Mass Appeal. Hey, thanks. You too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So meanwhile, we are making fish. Now you're going to share a secret with me. It's how to de-skin a fish. Right, that's why we've got the gloves on. Very often you'll get the fish while the uh, the skin is still on. Sometimes it's on sale. Sometimes you might forget to ask the fish person to take it off. Sometimes it's a dollar. I, I, whenever I go to buy fish, it's a dollar less per pound when you buy it with the skin on. Exactly. And so uh, this way uh, it's going to be a savings all around as well. Now this is counterintuitive because what's going to happen? You see you've got it skin side up on the fish. Uh -huh. You actually want it upside down. You were doing that for a reason. And, and that's why, uh, because what you're going to do, you're going to start at the end of the tail here and no, see the angle of the knife and you want to just kind of go parallel along to the skin. And so, and they can't really see it that well from this angle, but basically you kind of scooped with the knife. Exactly. At an angle. Exactly. And the reason uh, I've got this piece of paper towel, because sometimes if it can be a little bit uh, hard to hold on to, just use a towel or a piece of paper towel uh -huh. to hold the to skin. anchor it down. Anchor it down. And then you just slide your knife along like that. And does it kind of find its own way to go, or it, do you it, have to really guide it? You guide it a little bit. It's not. It takes a little bit of practice, not a lot. Because I'd be nervous about cutting off half the fish too and if, losing if half the fish. If you do, not a big deal because it's still very good, very edible, mm -hmm. and uh, you can go back and try it again. Do you want to give it a shot? Yes, as long as you're not going to be upset if you lose I, some fish I in the process. I never get upset. I'll hold on to this part. All right. So just slowly, and you might want to angle it just slowly. Go take take your time. Yep, you're doing well. Oh, yeah. See? It gets a little tough, but as long as you power it does. Yep. through it. Exactly. Take your time. I think I'm doing it, you're Bill. Do, you're doing a great job and there. And can you slide? Not always. No, it'll you probably don't want to rip. rip. It'll probably rip. Okay, so don't rip it, everyone, because that's what I would do. Yeah. Probably still will do. Yeah, it's okay. And, and you have to angle the knife down towards the board a bit. So you're doing great. You're doing very well. Who would Want me thought. to take over? Yes, I do. I, I thought you might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to provide color commentary. That's exactly it. Just, just take, it doesn't take all that much practice. Now, Bill, in the meantime, what do you have going on in this pot right here? This is a recipe I came up with years ago. I call it Mediterranean Haddock. Okay. And oh, oh. See, that's why that's why I don't want to take off Seth's arm <laughs> no. on live TV. Anyway. Oh no, almost had a trip to the hospital. Exactly. Totally and worth it. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> uh, Kalamata olives, I use pitted olives, but I still chop them up. Yeah. Because the reason is is there might only be a pit hidden in there. So chop them up. So I've got some onions and garlic I've sauteed, mm -hmm. a little white wine. Uh, uh, tomatoes, uh, tomato paste to thicken it up, and the Kalamata olives. If you don't have tomato paste, can you use something else to thicken up a sauce? Yes, a thyme. Not thyme. as in T-I-M-E, as it let it reduce down, and it'll <laughs> thicken because the uh, 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 this, uh, water will evaporate from there. Gotcha. So uh, let it uh, just simmer a little bit longer, and it'll thicken up. Even if it's a little bit uh, loose and watery, it's a great sauce. It doesn't have to be a TV-looking, uh, yeah. uh, 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 very tight sauce. Oh, this it's is in the TV. flavor. And so this way it's going to be a nice chunky but thicker sauce and you're going to let it, um, uh, re if you've only got 10 minutes, let it go 10 minutes. If you have half an hour, let it go half an hour. Perfect. Well, Bill, thank you so much. Stick around though. Because love the glove. Got to, yeah, exactly. We'll do a glove. Handshake will be good. Ahead on Mass Appeal, we're going to finish up our fish dish and show you so much more. But for And we are back with Chef Bill Collins, and we are answering your questions. We're finishing up our dishes, and we're going to dig in, which is what I've been looking to, forward to for you about are, an hour. You are. You're lying. He's I not also, even eating. I ate a lot of ham so, <laughs> during the commercial break. Oh, we just had a caller. I think we just lost oh, the caller. Oh, call back. So hopefully they'll call back. In the meantime, Chef Bill, we're having a great time with you in the kitchen. Yes. We, we have all kinds of goodies. Uh, the fish yes. is about to come out of the oven. We have that glazed ham. Uh, I don't know if you can pick up in the high depth the nice little glaze on the top of the ham. It's not just the studio lights. It really is a very nice glaze <laughs> that we put on, you know, not even a half an hour ago. So it's that quick. And it's a texture thing, too, because you're going it, to, it's a little bit maybe crunchy almost. It, it gives a nice, almost little crusty yeah. uh, top to it, but without being too sweet. And that's the thing I mentioned earlier. Gee, you can pop this into a soup. You're not going to all of a sudden have a soup uh, that's sweet. Uh, it's going uh, it to turn out really well and not be too sweet. That's good. Well, I think we have a caller on the line. Catherine, can you hear us? Yes. How you doing? Good, good. Ha happy holidays. Can we help you? Thank you. I have a 19 inch of uh, whole boneless rib roast that we're cooking. Yep. For Christmas dinner. How long and it, uh, what temperature? And now, um, uh, it's a boneless roast, did you say? Yes. And how much did you say it weighs? It probably weighs 20 pounds, 22 Ooh. pounds. 20 pounds, that's like cow, you're gonna walk right into the oven. <laughs> I know. 
Uh, I, here's what I, the general rule of thumb for something like that you don't want to go too high of a temperature because you're going to end up having it overly cooked and tough on the outside and raw on the inside. So I would say something like around 325 degrees, and but give it a number of hours because it's gonna be a slow roast inside. You could go as high as 350, but what you also might wanna do is just check it every hour or so. I mean, you don't have to check it for the first hour and a half. If, if you're talking about a 20 pound roast, uh, what you also might wanna do is actually cut it in half or even cut it into three pieces so there's a more manageable sized, smaller roasts uh, that will cook uh, you know, in the oven, uh, uh, but also will go a little bit faster as well. And you can go to a little bit of a higher temperature, 350, uh, a little salt and pepper on the outside, but keep an eye on the roast because the thing you want to be careful of is, again, not too high of a temperature because it's gonna be overcooked on the outside, especially with something that's that big. So take your time, no need to rush. And I would say it's probably gonna be a good few hours that it's gonna be in the oven. Um, I think that's a good idea to cut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of, it's also it's also easier to get something like that out of the oven when that's hot and that big and a pan that big. You probably need two people and a and a forklift to get that out. <laughs> so you, you do need to be very careful with that as well. And you're going to need to leave us your home address so that we can come visit you and enjoy some of your. Seth Christmas is crashing dinner. a lot of parties. He is. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Catherine, for calling in. Have a great holiday. Thank you. Thank you. So. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks. So what, what it's we time to get the, the fish out? You yep, grab the time, fish? yep, let's go pull the fish out of the oven. And I'll I've got my handy dandy. Dandy. I, I want to eat this. I'm going to eat ham while you two are working. Let's grab a fork here. <laughs> so, also, and Bill, we didn't get to touch on the, these potatoes that are here. What's going on with that? I did just a quick little uh, classic rustic gratin, but uh, that means it should have a crust. It doesn't. There's no cheese. It's a very light, flavorful dish. But what it is is just sauteed onions, a little chicken stock and uh, the potatoes, you just throw them in the oven and they accompany everything beautifully. Did you put Easy. these potatoes wow. in the oven raw or did you blanch them or boil them first? No, I put them in raw. What I did was uh, I just uh, sauteed the onions, put it in with the stock, I brought it to a simmer on the stove uh -huh. and finished it. And what happens is the uh, potatoes absorb the stock. Oh, oh cause yes. for me, if I ever try to do that, they become way too hard and I can't. Exactly, you put them in with the liquid. Yeah. Now right here, what I'm doing with the Ooh, fish Bill. is just putting a little grated Parmesan cause what says, uh, uh, you know, Mediterranean than uh, freshly grated Parmesan. Exactly. And, and what says the holidays like indulgence with cheese. You know, exactly. But Parmesan's is, is a really good one. So I would just hold up, let that cool down just a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, but the way you can also tell when the fish is ready is to take a fork, and I happen to have one right here, and just kind of gently and easily pull it apart of it. So very flaky. If you see it uh, opaque and flaky, break apart like that. It's done. So you're looking for the flake. Exactly. So uh, that way uh, it's still going to be moist. Uh, and that's going to take 10 or 12 uh, minutes in the, uh, in, in the oven, maybe a few minutes more with the sauce, but you don't want to overcook it. Bill, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. It's always so nice to have you thank here, you. Bill. Thank you, everyone, for calling in yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and your questions answered. Don't go anywhere because there's more Mass Appeal coming up right after this.